So we're down here on the shore in St Moors doing a shore search survey. The volunteers and myself have been finding lots of different species of crabs under the rocks and under the seaweeds. It's quite interesting actually, crabs are one of my favourite groups of animals you find on the shore. And we've got a couple of little um, small crabs here that we found. These are a common shore crab. Like the name suggests, it is a common species around the UK. And you can identify them by the, the fact that they have got five little spikes from the corner of the shell to the eye socket. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, they have quite a, f a flatty sort of bit between the eyes and then another five spikes. But the main thing is they've got this shell which kind of looks a bit like a face if you use your imagination. You can sort of see two eyes and nose and a mouth on the back of the shell. And then the other feature is their back legs don't have flat swimming uh, appendages like the swimming crabs do. So they have these sort of more pointed legs. But I've lifted a few rocks this morning and every rock we've lifted has have one of these beauties under it. So this is a Montague's crab. Sometimes they're called pebble crabs because it feels lovely and smooth on the back like a pebble. I always describe them as a bodybuilder of the crab world with these massive claws. They're normally kind of a uniform colour. It can be brown, it can be purpley, brick red sometimes. They often have darker tips on the claws but not always. Very, very common nowadays in Cornish, on Cornish shores. Now another species we find here there you go, the little pasty crabs or edible crabs. Can you see the shape of the shell? It looks like he's been crimped around the edges. It feels like pottery to be honest, it feels. And uh, yeah, very distinctive shape. These are the ones that will grow into a much larger uh, crab. Uh, but the shore is an important nursery area for these. So we'd expect to find quite large numbers of um, these edible crabs on Cornish shores. So another warm water arrival that we've had in the southwest. This is the Rizzo's crab. This is very closely related to the Montague's crab, but it has a, a much sort of flatter shell, and quite often it has um, lovely sort of marbled markings. It's very varied in colour, this species. But the real feature that makes it different are these back legs, which have uh, got hairs coming off the top and the bottom of the legs. And that makes them really, really uh, easy to tell apart from a Montague's crab. A really pretty little crab. So if I I'll get you a Montague's crab just to show you for comparison. You can actually see the, uh, the back legs here, lacking hairs. Okay, a bit more of a rounded shaped shell. Whereas the Rizzo's crab has got really hairy back legs and a much flatter shell. We found a, an amazing hermit crab here inside a whelk shell. It's a beautiful animal, quite shy. So obviously hermit crabs don't have a shell of their own. They've got a soft sort of corkscrew shaped tail uh, that's perfectly shaped to sort of cling on inside a shell like this and they carry that around like a little mobile home. Now it's quite interesting but there's actually a species of hydroid so this is related to corals um, and anemones and uh, that grows um, only on the shell of a hermit crab it gets a free ride around the seabed. On the shell here you can see the hydroid just growing it's kind of a kind of looks like a sort of a mouldy patch but it's actually quite spiky and that's known as hermit crab fur. Your fingers round behind the claws though. <laughs> but there you have a velvet swimming crab. Beautiful animal, really feisty, aggressive crabs. They've got these beautiful blue markings on the claws and the red patches on the inside of the arms. They've also got red eyes. Uh, but um, the name velvet swimming crab comes from this lovely velvety texture on the shell. The feature which uh, allows them to swim are these beautiful flattened back legs which are like a pair of paddles and uh, it will swim really rapidly sideways through the water with those uh, paddle like back legs. Underneath the crab they have a tail. Uh, you can tell if it's a, a male or a female by looking at the shape of the tail. This one's a male so the, the tail is very narrow and triangle shaped. A female will have a much, much wider tail under which she can carry her eggs. So you look at the shape of the tail. If it's a triangle narrow tail, it's a male. And if it's a wide rounded shaped tail, it's a female. So another um, thing that we found today on the shore, what looks at first glance like a dead crab. Okay, well, it's very lifeless, but it isn't dead because this is actually an empty shell. The crab 
when it grows has to shed its shell to grow and um, the way it does that it actually grows a new shell underneath that's soft and squidgy it then sucks in lots of seawater expanding the new shell and splitting the old shell across the back it will then pull out all of its uh, limbs its claws its legs um, and it will climb out of the old shell the new shell that is formed will be soft and flexible so once it's managed to get out of the old shell it will scuttle away and hide it will then continue pumping itself up with seawater until it's grown by about a third and then it'll have to sit and wait and hope it doesn't get eaten by anything uh, because what will happen is a chemical reaction will then uh, harden the new shell so that it's got plenty of room for growth they even leave the surface of their gills behind inside here so but if you have a sniff if that was a dead crab that would absolutely stink but this just smells like the sea so it's all of the, the, the living tissue the flesh you know it's all been removed so this is definitely a malt not a dead crab